<clears throat> All right, what's going on guys? Fumbles back again, and I wanted to do a nice little deep dive discussion when it comes to this character, Yuha Baha, right? Now, there is a ton of controversy about him being made a Brave Battle character pretty much again. Um, when the original Yuha came out, uh, no, 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 okay, I'm gonna be talking a lot, a lot, a lot. But this is gonna be a nice little discussion, right? So, <clears throat> when the original Yuha came out, he actually wasn't given Frenzy. He was given Berserker 50%, a bruiser of 30% and then he also got bombardment. This is also during a time when a character having frenzy and bombardment was unheard of, right? His transformation mechanic was tied to his special. It also gave him barriers as well. He also had a start barrier plus 10 and this actually ended up being the reason he ended up being so good in brave battles as opposed to anything else in the game. He didn't have frenzy, he didn't have flurry. However, what he did have was a nice big meaty barrier followed up with a crazy crazy soul bomb during a time that invincibility was never a thing. Plus, this was also before T15 even came out, so we weren't able to give characters Pierce Barrier. So you had to have a character that could bypass all those barriers, and chances were this UL was built with stamina in mind, and because he also had debilitator plus 5 seconds and weakening, this character soul bomb with his bombardment since you built him with uh, like Pupples and Yukis, because this was also during a time without Transcendence, ain't it? Right? This character would literally just mollywop almost anything. All you needed to do was survive long enough to get the soul bomb. If one of your allies gets the soul bomb, make sure that he pops his off. G, G, no re. That's it. It's done. Right? He also had Captain Killer, which is pretty good against a lot of the characters that ended up getting flurry. A lot of the characters in the, in the meta that were meta-defining were literally Kenpachi, Kenpachi, Kenpachi. Believe it or not, this actually was a PvP team for a time just because they all got Flurry, and Flurry was actually really rare at the time. Um, then Toshiro came in, he kind of dominated the meta, but for the most part, you'll see here, almost all the characters that were even remotely part of the meta when Yuwa came out was literally all Kenpachis. I, mean, I guess she's a Kenpachi sort of, right? They're all captains. So he pretty much had Captain Killer almost always active except for one enemy and that was Noitora, which you probably had him in the party anyways because he's you need a boost right you need a boost that gives you your defense so even if your ui was to take damage you have some defense so a lot of people really didn't like that but this time around this character is 100 percent completely designed for brave battles you'll see here half stamina only decreased damage reduction of 50 percent with his damage reduction of 16 percent it's going to be really 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 good how it'll compound within itself a uh, berserker 50 percent he has the booster skill of 30 percent so he's going to be a team booster uh, with the booster skill as well, so he's gonna be giving a boost to your entire allies in, in brave battles now for 42.9% This character is probably going to be necessary. I'm not gonna lie like this is that's meta defining right there Debilitator plus five seconds paralysis and drain on everything so he's gonna be able to self heal as well He has flurry plus two. He has guard break ignore brave battle invincibility kind of necessary still eventually That's probably gonna get phased out as uh, more characters come out that bypass that or that don't even have invincibility, right? Brave Battles only increase normal attack damage when an enemy or an ally is KO'd plus 20%. I wonder if this will trigger if you give him last ditch, would it count for himself? Um, not sure about that, but that'll be interesting to test. Brave Battles only prevent last ditch survival. I love this skill. I believe the other character that has this skill is Kuryashiki as well as Spirits Are Forever With You Beyond Bankai Kenpachi. That skill is really, 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 really good. Uh, prevent last ditch survival. Do you have prevent last ditch too? Prevent last ditch. I love the prevent last ditch skill. Personally, I hate when a match drags on and drags on. When there was invincibility and then you had like 15 people with last ditch survival plus 300%, the Brave Battles was honestly one of the most toxic, boring game modes I've ever seen in my entire life. So I'm kind of glad with this Yuwa coming out. Now, am I upset that Yuwa ended up becoming a NAD character? Not necessarily. I am a little disappointed because I do love my SP based characters. But realistically, I do enjoy a nice hype Brave Battle character that is pretty beefy. My only issue is that since you're never guaranteed to pull characters in this game, I really don't like being forced to summon for a character that I'm probably only going to use in Brave Battles. I am... <clears throat> might be a hot take. Personally, I do like this Yuwa outside of Brave Battles. Even though he has Captain Killer, even though three of his skills are literally pretty much for Brave Battles, like the Ignore Brave Battle Men's Ability, Brave Battle Normal Attack Damage plus 20% when an enemy or ally is KO'd, Prevent Last Ditch Survival plus one. 
Personally, the half stamina only is going to be really good for autoing. He's a melee unit, which means he's going to auto very, very quickly. He has flurry plus two. He has built in guard break, which is good. He's a team booster, which means that he's not going to be using his strong attacks as often as someone like Kempachi, for example, like Spirit Surfer would be on Bonkai Kempachi. And on top of that, he has a walking vortex for his second strong attack with the booster skill, meaning that even at one out of five, this character is going to be hitting a lot harder than most characters that are nat based, despite not having the appropriate killer. Um, the Berserker plus 50% means his strong attacks are going to be somewhat useful. He actually has a pretty good kit in terms of his strong attacks. And for his Soul Tree, he actually has poise built into him, so good for nat. Sprinter plus one, and then weaken immunity, so that's pretty good. I like it. I, I like this character a bit first strong attack is going to be the 625 aoe distant we've seen this with the other uh kempachi right here yoruichi has it but she has havoc same thing with nel yell good for a strong attack for a nad based character because it's not like um personally i think lunges are outdated but i do love me an aoe distant skill for a first strong attack especially for a melee nad character because you, you'll be able to knock him down and then approach right you don't have to like lunge in and oh great everyone's around me now and that's one of the things that I don't really like with lunges for nad characters, personally. Second strong attack, walking vortex, and then the third strong attack is a standard full screen. Now, fortunately, he can actually already posted his own gameplay, and I love Heekin's gameplay. If you haven't subscribed to the boy, make sure to subscribe to him. XX Heekin, I'll leave a link down in the description below. And yeah, I like, <laughs> I like how his description paralyze and drain wins right and that's what i really really genuinely like about this character is that he also has paralysis and drain on everything except for his second strong attack it would be kind of nice if he had the um weak the drain on his second strong attack with that vortex but going into his actual skills you'll see here the aoe on this actually does look really nice and even though it's a 625 you'll see that it does hit all the way around here up until like over here which is really good range so it has some pretty good spread on it right because it is 6 625 and that's pretty much kind of like not really a full screen but like in front of you that's really really good range boom boom Third strong attack, he has the eyes that come down, which is really, really cool. Very akin to his special move in the mind version of this character as well. And then his vortex. I, I'm not gonna lie, I'm a fan. Uh, his vortex actually looks genuinely really, really, really nice as well. And then his nad, remember that he has flurry plus two, so he's gonna be hitting very, very hard on top of the fact that he got a bruiser. Uh, let me see where the bruiser is. I think it was like 30%. Oh, he didn't get a bruiser. Okay, never mind. My bad. I, I'm, I'm, I'm spacing with the booster skill. But since he does have the boost with the booster skill, I, I like this character. So let's check out the type of damage that we're dealing before the boost with his nat. There we go. So his nat is hitting for 1400. So I'm going to actually write this down. 1400 with a crit roughly and then 1231 without a crit. Okay. Now with the booster skill... I'm gonna wait until there it is wait for the first hit boom okay so you'll see here that with his boost his attack is going from a 12 a 1400 with a crit all the way up to 2000 with a crit and it's gonna hit three times too which means that you're gonna be dealing really 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 good damage so i mean the meta has always shifted when it comes to brave battle characters and historically brave battle characters that tend to be hype end up like it is what it is whether we like it or not that's usually the case right when these two kampachis got their six star versions they were the first character to get flurry and everyone thought it was crazy because oh another kampachi does he have flurry he has flurry that's crazy and then after um thousand year blood war came out we ended up getting someone like toshiro and toshiro kind of dominated the landscape because of his fast activation times he literally was able to wipe the floor with every single kampachi because sp based characters bypass the defense mechanic that is in the game which is why i personally like an sp based brave battle meta because it pretty much just comes down to um activation times and usually as host meaning if you're the one attacking you win usually you end up winning because usually yours activates faster unless their activation time is actually like significantly faster right uh next we did have unahana who came out and kind of like dominated the landscape and for her time even outside of brave battles despite her being the brave battle queen of the gods she ended up being like the strongest of all she had a heal on her second which is insane so if she ever got low because she did have damage reduction 
she would be able to heal herself back up. If she got the soul bomb, she had a chance to insta kill and fully heal herself back up. So when you ran her with damage reduction or dodge, because um, we were just starting to get um, more damage reduction links at the time, then this character was good. Remember that this, uh, I believe, this was after Link's Thought Potions came out, but this was before, obviously before Transcendence, this was obviously before T15. So she had the Medic, so she was a team healer, she had Flurry, she had Long Reach, she had Sprinter plus one, and she had Poise too. Like, um, there was no innate skills back then. First strong attack, Lunge, first strong attack, really good for Brave Battles at the time. Uh, 575 AoE, this actually did deal damage as well, and then full screen third strong attack. Her dealing damage with her second strong attack was actually relatively new at the time because a lot of heals were literally no hit attacks. Like if I go to her original Retsu from way back in the day, I'll, I'll type in three. <clears throat> there we go. Like this Retsu, her first strong attack is a heal, right? But if I actually click on attack, go to her thing, strong attack one continue magnification zero so a lot of these characters ended up not even like dealing any damage then we ended up getting noitora literally designed to, to kill retsu he was a team boost he had a transformation mechanic he had start barrier so unahana actually had a little bit of a tough time but honestly if you were able to pull this character and you had unahana you ran both both these characters were just cracked together Damage reduction, debilitator plus 5 seconds, paralysis on everything including his soul bomb. So if you needed some utility, you can choose to use his soul bomb instead of Unahana's. Personally, I liked running Unahana's because then he heals up too. Uh, this is also during a time without invincibility, right? Then Yuha came out, <clears throat> and honestly, Yuha was just stupid. We already talked about uh, in length about why he was like as broken as he was. Also, whenever he uses uh, ultimate, he also had weakening on all of his attacks as well. He was really more of just a nuker than anything else. Tokinata did play a little bit of a part in Brave Battle. I only want to make note of him just because even though he is a ranged nad character without poise, because he was a ranged nad character at the time, he actually did per like relatively well. Now, going into Askin, Askin was also a hype character. A lot of people really liked him until like people realized, oh, this character is flurry poise. He's just for Brave Battles. And that kind of screwed him up a bit, because I feel like this character could have potentially been a lot better. Another character that definitely was super, super hype, and everyone was excited for until they realized he was a Brave Battle character, was, well, you guessed it, Thousand Year Blood War Jugram. And Jugram, I feel like this Jugram kind of pissed off, I want to say, like, almost the entirety of the, the BBS community. So many people were upset because not only was he really crazy OP in Brave Battles, he was borderline necessary, and he also came out for um, for a fifth anniversary, right? He had the Berserker 50%, so kind of nice. He had Brave Battle Counter, and then he also had the Brave Battle Temporary Invincibility, the first character to get invincibility, and literally the whole reason that Brave Battles ended up becoming a like 20 to 30 second fuckfest. And I personally hated his meta, I was grateful that I pulled him, but I hated the fact that I needed to run him and I couldn't even be remotely, um, so what I'm looking for, creative with what I wanted to do. Like, uh, hell, during the time that Transcendence came out, I was running random teams just for fun. Like, I would think uh, one, of my, one of my teams, I literally ran, let me see, and yeah, and I even had another content creator, like, shit talk me just because I wanted to play the game how I wanted to play it, bro. Like, this was my, this was my Brave Battle team. I literally had, uh, I literally came out with this, this video, uh, Spirit Society, Byakia, Can't Fear Your Own World, Halibut, and Tokinata. These were my first three characters that I ever transcended, and that video ended up getting, like, 25,000 views. What, 24,000, right? I was rounding up, okay. Um, and I, I was incredibly happy that I was able to, like, screw around with it, and I, like, I, I, like sometimes you just want to have fun with the game right unfortunately with the brave battle invincibility crap like it kind of took away the ability to like run really fun teams which is why i'm really really happy that brave battle temporary invincibility is slowly starting to get phased out which is why i really love seeing like aaron's team because aaron has uh, aaron's running like six anniversary eisen so once i get my once i get my second anniversary eisen five out of five i'm probably gonna be running that too because he's He's actually genuinely good in Brave Battles, but you have to actually build them specifically for Brave Battles, otherwise, it's not it's just not gonna work, right? So we have a Pierce Barrier on him, which is actually pretty good, and then on top of that, you have the Temporary Invincibility. So not only did he have the Invincibility, but since he has Pierce Barrier, he actually goes and bypasses the enemy that he's going up against anyways. Now, if I remember correctly, um, 
this character was made pretty much as a counter for I want to say like Ichibe, which is kind of funny because he had the killer, but he didn't have the attribute advantage. But since he was invincible anyways, he didn't really have a problem. Uh, Ichibe, also another character. I actually, I'm, I'm kind of sad that I completely spaced out on him. Ichibe. Yeah, Ichibe was another character that came out uh, right before Askin. Askin kind of tried to counter Ichibe, but Ichibe... Ichibe was still OP. Star Barrier plus 10, Pierce Barrier, uh, Berserker 50%, Bruiser 20% with Flurry, Paralysis Immunity, which is really good against the Noitora. And even then, Noitora was still really good. But, like, I just wanted to literally just highlight that a lot of these hype characters end up becoming Brave Battle characters. Whether we like it or not, at the end of the day, it's kind of cool seeing the hype characters actually played in some game mode and being, quote unquote, the meta for that game mode. Um, I do like what they did with Kuriyashiki. Unfortunately, I really don't see him, myself using this character outside of Brave Battles. I think he got Guard Break. No, he didn't get Guard Break. That's so ugly. I don't know why I remember this character getting Guard Break. I know you got Guard Break. I was so happy when I saw Guard Break on him because he was also the first character with Flurry Plus 2. I believe he was the first character with Flurry Plus 2. I might be wrong. I don't believe I am wrong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, think, I believe he was the first character with Flurry Plus 2. And then on top of that, he got the Guard Break. He got the Last Ditch. So he, he had the Start Barrier. So honestly, like this character ended up being pretty cracked outside of Brave Battles. But let's be real here. Like, a lot of these newer SP-based characters that are becoming meta, like, that, well, excuse me, that are, like, you know, meta-defining characters like Lisa, characters like this Ichigo, they clear so fast now that it's honestly kind of sad because, like, most flurry, most flurry characters can't really keep up. Um, so I'm not really surprised that uh, they're opting for quite a few of these Flurry Plus 2 characters more often than not being relatively good in Brave Battles. They're giving them poise, they're giving them... Um, maybe even pierce barrier but with the t15 skill you give him pierce barrier so i mean I i'm not really too hurt about this character being a brave battle unit i think he's actually going to be really cool his design looks awesome and once again shout out to he can like really 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 cool to see and then his soul bomb is like still one of like i love the hand thing Hold up, those hands are cursed, bro. <laughs> yo, yo, what's going on with your nail, my G? Oh my lord. Okay, anyways. Um, yeah, but I mean that's that's pretty much it when it comes to this UL. I'm personally happy with it. Let me know in the comments below if you like me doing these little deep dives on these characters, a little more discussion. Um honestly the reason that I like I, I personally like doing this is it gives me a lot more freedom and I don't have to care about the time. Um usually when I'm doing my gameplay videos, I'm like mentally thinking oh i need to kind of not rush but i need to do this in a short time span because uh, honestly i can go on and on all day about these characters like I, I personally love seeing these characters get revealed i love seeing these characters what they do what how they they feel how they play with all that stuff and um yeah i mean i personally enjoy doing it i will be doing aizen's um later on today so you'll probably see that in the next few hours i'll be recording it literally right after this but um yeah, let me know in the comments below what you guys think about this UI. I'll be reading all my comments when it comes to these types of videos for sure. And yeah, I'm gonna leave it with you guys as grind. I'll catch up with him. Stay blessed. Like, comment, and subscribe. If you hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, shout out to, to uh, the data miners of the century. We got XX. He can, if you haven't subscribed to him, make sure to subscribe. Put your no uh, bell notifications on him. Maybe if you want to do it for me too. Or maybe you will even subscribe to me. <laughs> maybe. Maybe. And then, of course, the one and only website, bbs-simulator.com. From the boy Soul Dex, consider becoming a Patreon. And yeah, no, one of the best sites in the entire, uh, well, definitely the best site in the BBS community, but definitely one of the best sites for a, a gotcha game to begin with, which is really, really dope. Anyways, I'm going to leave it at that. Stay blessed, y'all. I'll see y'all in the next one. Peace.